Hey there guys, this is Reckles with One to Buy Gold, and today we're going to be talking about how to make 5 million gold a month, but I I need to start off by getting a little bit sappy with y'all. So, uh, the channel recently had its 6 year anniversary, which blows my mind, it's crazy, uh, it, it's gone from just a blog that got uh, linked on the Undermine Journal to, like, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, and I, it's my job. Uh, like, when, when I go to a party and people ask me what I do for a living, I get to say I play World of Warcraft, and that's all thanks to y'all. So, I want to give back to you. And my crazy idea is to give away a Brutosaur a month during the year 2020. So, if all goes according to plan, I'm actually going to be starting this a little bit early and giving away the first one at the Want to Buy Gold meetup at BlizzCon, which will be on the evening of day one. Go follow me on Twitter or Twitch uh, as we get more information on that. I'll probably put a link down in the comments too once we have um, like concrete times. But with this video, I actually wanted to talk about my game plan, how I'm actually going to be going about doing it. And while this isn't necessarily a guide, hopefully y'all will be able to glean some things from that. So let's get into it. Okay, we got a blank canvas here. Our goal is 5 million gold a month. Now, anytime you've got a big goal like this, uh, something that seems crazy, but you like you know it's doable, but it's beyond your current capabilities, like 5 million gold a month is beyond my current capabilities, uh, you got to figure out how you're going to break it down into bite-sized little pieces. One step at a time, One you build a wall with one brick at a time. That five million a month comes out to about a hundred seventy thousand a day, which is still a lot. But a hundred a wow token a day that's that's doable. That's doable. You can math that out and figure out how you do that. A uh, 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 prop to to throw another wrench in this. I'd like to be able to consistently do this. I don't want to fall short. I don't want to have a month where I get sick for a week or I have to go out of town and then like I'm 500k short of the giveaway. I want to be doing this every single month. Now, uh, I, I should probably say just real quick. If y'all want. Uh, the most chances possible at this. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing the giveaways through uh, here on YouTube in the comments, over on Twitter, so go follow me there, and on Twitch, and uh, I'll also be probably doing a Patreon-only giveaway. So go follow and sub to me in all those four places and get your, your fill of reckles. So I'd like to be able to get 170k a day and in order to ensure that I get 170k, I want to shoot for 300k, and then I'll be set. And that's that's a lot for me. And to make that even harder, I'd like to be able to do that in 30 minutes or less. Uh, so like on track for 600k per hour, which is that's too much. There are very few farms that are that good. And the reason why I want to do it in 30 minutes or less is, I mean, obvious, farming's fun. I love farming, but I don't want to have to do that, especially since videos, like making videos for you guys takes a lot of time. Even the five, eight minute videos I put out take 10, 20 hours to make. Now, that may seem like entirely too much, and it probably is. Just, just to give you an example, if I go out and I farm for three hours, and then I spend 30 minutes writing a script, and then I spend 30 minutes doing the voiceover for that script, and then I spend 30 minutes editing that voiceover. All of a sudden, we're at five hours, and I haven't even gotten onto the, the actual video editing, and that's assuming that I knew where to go, and the farm didn't have any prerequisites, and it was only one farm that I was testing. So, uh, things stack up quick, and it's a lot of time. So, how would I normally go about doing it? If someone came to me and was like, I want to make 5 million gold, what would I tell them? Well, three easy words. Just use your freaking professions. That's four. Don't worry about it. Uh, search craft post every day has been the mantra of the channel and... and you know, since the beginning, and it's it's how to make gold. Every profession out there, regardless of your server, regardless of the profession, can make you 50k a day in about 10 minutes or less if you're doing things properly. And if you're not making that 50k a day, the reason is search craft post every day that you're not doing that. Um, 
search includes getting cheap materials, farming up cheap materials, doing that however you you do, buying them cheap off the auction house. Uh, it also includes getting the recipes. There's an awesome website called kruthney.net forward slash recipes that lists all the recipes uh, that are available and where to get them. Uh, and, and if you just go through that and you try to get like 75%, you'll be able to make that 50K. Another reason why you might not be making that gold is that you're not actually uh, crafting everything profitable. A lot of people pick and choose. They only make a couple of the current content items. Uh, even, you know what? I'll use myself as an example. I did something bad on my leather worker. I didn't think leg armors would sell, and they cost, like, primal air to make, so I just didn't make them. I was like, who's gonna buy this, right? Well, apparently, everyone who levels buys them and enchants their heirlooms with them, and now I keep that stocked up on the auction house, and I make, like, 50, 100,000 gold a month extra just from leg armors, uh, so that's great. Just make everything don't pick and choose for the for post it's just post things up with trade skill master trade tsm makes things so quick and easy uh once you get it set up uh that like it's not a the auction house isn't a hassle which is kind of the first big hurdle that people encounter they're like oh i, d I don't want to have to look up the prices for everything and like track on a piece of paper how much everything should be worth before i post it up um, hopefully, though, we will be seeing uh, the improved auction house come to pass uh, soon. Blizzard's been working on that for over a year. And the last reason you might not be making gold is every day. You gotta be consistent with it. If you watch a video for a farm that gets you 200 bajillion gold per hour, that's great. But if you hate doing that farm, then you're gonna do it for... 30 minutes and then you're gonna go back to just running laps around the storm wind and you would have been better off doing something that got you five or ten thousand gold that you freaking love doing and you did for two hours a day because it made you smile oh and i almost forgot i made a i made a whole thing for this okay so uh the first, that's that's the first step. Search craft post every day. That is crafting. That's your primary gold making uh, method. And then you've got your tier two things. And that's uh, flipping or farming or pets or mounts or whatever, you know, vendor runs, recipes, TCG, whatever it is. Uh, those come second after your professions. I say here, pets, transmog, or farming, but there's so much more to that. Just within, I'll use pets as an example, just within pets, how, how, how are you making gold with pets? Are you leveling them up as a service from one to 25 because you're good at that and it's super squirt week? You know, on, during super squirt week, you can charge 5K to level up pets from one to 25 and it takes three minutes. So that's 5K every three minutes. That's however much many golds per hour. Uh, flipping. Flipping pets doesn't mean one specific thing. You could be buying low and selling high on your server. You could be doing pet arbitrage, which is buying cheap pets on one server and selling them on a server where they're more expensive. Flipping can also mean buying green quality pets and using a pet upgrade stone to level them to rare. And then I've got one last thing here, like, Farming, there's so many ways you can farm pets. And then within each one of these little uh, pink boxes, there's like 50, 100 different pets that you can go know about. And each one of these little pink boxes can get you a WoW token each and every month. So if I'd love to see the web of all of the different gold making methods out there uh you know d gosh shuffles and all that it, it it it'd be great but there's a problem with this and that is that i can't use any of that um i am on one tiny little server all all of the prof i have like 50 million gold worth of crafts on one specific little server. And then I've, I, I play on Zul'jin 2, which is bigger, but I only have one tune there with any, any uh, patterns or recipes. So I could make that 170K a day, but in order to restock everything profitable from all of my professions and get you know on track for 300K, 
it'd take me two hours a day just in posting those like 5,000 items. And while I could focus on fewer items that are more expensive, again, I'm on a really small server, so my sales will come, but they'll be really inconsistent and really susceptible to competition. If one or two other people on my tiny server decide, hey, I'm going to come in and do the same thing you are, then a bunch of my gold goes away and I can't do the giveaway. So I need something more consistent and even better gold per hour, and that's why you've seen me doing multi-boxing in the past few videos. So here's my game plan. Uh, I am going to be playing on four different servers, playing and posting on four servers. I'm going to have two accounts on each of those servers, eight accounts total. Okay, so before I go over some of the benefits and my actual game plan, uh, I wanted to talk about one thing that I was always kind of confused about. Like, what is multiboxing? Uh, how do you have multiple accounts? So there's actually two kinds of accounts in WoW, uh, kind of. You've got your Battle.net account, which is tied to your email address, and then within and underneath that Battle.net account, you can have up to eight different World of Warcraft accounts. Um, and so flying and all your mounts and all your pets are actually tied to your Battle.net account rather than your individual World of Warcraft account. So once you get Draenor flying or Legion or, you know, whatever BFA flying, uh, you have that across all your accounts. Heirlooms, too, is a big benefit. And the other thing, no, multiboxing is not botting. Uh, they're they're very very different. Uh, multi boxing, you you have all these accounts open at the same time, and there is software out there that I'll put a referral link to. It's called IS Boxer. That it it takes care of all the back end stuff. You press one key, and it presses that button on every character. Uh, so that's fine. Blizzard's fine with it. They've been a okay since like day one of vanilla. And then botting, on the other hand, is when you can go to sleep and your character's still doing something. Or when uh, you uh, make a keyboard macro that just clicks disenchant over and over and over while you go make a sandwich. Like, that's, that's, that's more on the fringe, but it's still botting. You, as long as you are physically there pressing a button, Blizzard's A-OK -okay with it, and they have been since the start. Um, so, obvious things, with eight characters, we can make eight times the gold. The downside is the cost. And I need to move over here for a little bit. The upside is obviously that you can make, you know, eight times the gold with this, or two times. You can just multi-box with two accounts and have one sniping the auction house all the time. But uh, the downside with this is that it'll be eight time eight WoW tokens a month that I need to farm up, which comes out to 1.4 million gold a month just to stay afloat. Now, there's an interesting thing with it. Like, that, that seems crazy. A lot of y'all haven't ever made 1.4 million gold a month. Uh, that gives me a daily operating cost of 46k. Uh, and, but... A daily operating cost per account of only 6k. Now, the funny thing about that is that it's actually the same as you and, and the same as anyone. Uh, in order to buy a WoW token every, every month, you need to make 6k a day. So with multiboxing, you still have the same initial investment. As far as time is concerned, you still have to make the same amount per account. But then, once you make more than that, it's multiplied by however many accounts you have. So here, here, I, I, I got another thing for you. If these little boxes represent the time spent farming that 6K per day, you know, here's the amount of time you gotta spend with one account, here's the time you gotta spend with eight accounts. It's the same amount of time. The magic comes in when you double it. If you go above and beyond and you mine for twice as long or you farm twice as many pets, Here's how much gold you make with one account. Here's how much you make with eight accounts. And that big ass blue bar is where I'm going to be making the five million per month. 
Okay, so here is the actual list, the, the game plan. I'm going to be focusing on four different sections. We got farmable mats, farmable pets, farmable mounts, and then crafted mounts. A lot of these things are gated or super low drop rate, high ticket items, so I don't have to spend all day every day posting. I don't get burnt out on posting like I did with the Transmog Top 10. I'll, I'll give a little overview on each thing, but like if, if you want to know where to go to farm up uh, the Bronze Whelpling, just Google want to buy gold Bronze Whelpling, and I've got a video on it. Um, but... So farmable mats, these are how I snowballed. This is this is how I started making, uh, this is how I made that 4.4 million gold in the last month in order to just buy the eight accounts. Um, so a lot of Xenanthid and Osmonite farming, Anchorweed and the current content mats, along with uh, some of the old world mats. Like you may not think Whiptail or Ashara's Veil is the go-to farm, but like people buy a lot of it. People buy a lot of ghost iron ore. If you're on a big server, you could just farm ghost iron ore 24 hours a day and you wouldn't be able to supply the auction house with how much it needs. Uh, so do those things. Those, those things are good if you need immediate gold right now. You've got a wow token that you need. You're 50K short of a wow token and you've got two days of game time left. Oh no, what do I do? Go farm any of these things. One of my favorites so far is actually, uh, I've got two. I've got Primal Shadow, which I absolutely love multiboxing. It's so easy, you hardly have to move, but if you do want to double how much Primal Shadow you get, you can, but it like takes some going back and forth and it takes some doing. And then Volatile Air, I've had a lot of fun with that. So uh, in the, the best way to farm Volatile Air is with the dungeon in Oldham, but if you multi-box it, you have to actually broadcast uh, your key presses and your movement keys and the problem with that is there are knockbacks in this dungeon and There's like the broadcasting isn't actually perfect. It, it depends on your latency So you end up like being a little bit off and you're always trying to keep one of your accounts from falling off the edge And it's just a lot of fun and it's really rewarding when you make improvements and you figure out where you can save time. So I'm having a lot of fun farming that and I'm actually uh, making a lot of gold with it. Next, we've got the farmable pets. So all of the vanilla cageable pets, you've got Azure Whelpling, Emerald Whelpling, which includes the Sprite Darter Hatchling. Uh, you've got Crimson Whelp. Uh, the Dark Whelpling, Hyacinth Macaw, comes with the Rizashi Hatchling, the Black Tabby Cat. Uh, and then there's some others, Bronze, Gazrookie, the Lanticore, uh, Rebellious Imp. Uh, I didn't put Black Tabby Cat, I mentioned. But you you get the idea. There are There are a couple pets that you can farm out in the open world and with eight accounts, I can actually do some cool stuff. So like with the Crimson Whelpling farm, you know, if you do it as a two by four farm, uh, you're gonna be missing out on loot. So I can actually set up uh, one group of four in one phase and one group of four in another phase and be farming in two different phases simultaneously and getting the full respawn rate. It's great, it's crazy. I went from getting like one Crimson Whelp every three hours solo farming to like getting one or two every 30 minutes. It's it's fantastic. I did an hour at the Emerald Whelpling spot and I got like 15 or 20 Emerald Whelplings, two or three Sprite Darter Hatchlings. This is crazy, like multiboxing is crazy. But uh, getting 15 Emerald Whelplings is great, but then you do have to sell them, and so that's that's another reason why I'm on four different servers. If I tried to sell them on one server, like having the inventory was great, but I'd have to either tank my price and sell to uh, you know do wholesale sales, uh, or uh, I'd be subject to increased competition. So this way, like even if one server is super cheap. 
another server will be expensive. So then I also am going to be doing the farmable mount farms. These are the BFA mount farms. Uh, and uh, these are all humanoids. So there, you're going to be getting a lot of gr uh, greens and gold and uh, cloth. And because they're all humanoids and drop cloth, I also want to be doing these on tailors if I'm going to be doing them a lot. And these mounts have like a 1 in 50,000 drop rate. So uh, I'm going to be doing it a lot. So tailors have cloth scavenging, which increases the amount of cloth you get by 50%. Now... Uh, with BFA, the cloth scavenging is actually double. You get twice as much Tide Spray Linen and twice as much uh, Deep Sea Satin. But with Tools of the Trade, it actually increases the amount of Deep Sea Satin you get by three times. So you're getting six times the amount of Deep Sea Satin as a normal person would. And you're getting twice as much Tide Spray Linen as a normal person would. You're filling your bags up with Tide Spray Linen and Deep Sea Satin. And that's a lot, like, over a long amount of time, that's a lot of gold. So I want to be focusing on that. And then I'm going to slide over here. Uh, we've got the Crafted Mounts. Um... Panthers are from Jewel Crafters. Vile of the Sands is from Alchemists. I've got all these engineering mounts and then the flying carpet from tailoring. Now, so with the Panthers, you have to get exalted with the Order of the Cloud Serpents. I, I used to just farm the Onyx Eggs in the Jade Forest, the Windward Isle. But apparently, and I just learned this, you can farm the dragons over on the Yongle Ridge in Timeless Isle. They're these, like, ruby dragons flying around. You kill them, you get some eggs, and you can turn those eggs in. And they do force spawn. So if you just find a little route that you like, go around, kill a whole bunch of those, you'll be able to get enough eggs to just turn in for Exalted. And it's a lot faster and more consistent since they do force spawn. Now, Vile of the Sands. Oh, God. We'll talk more about Vile of the Sands. I did a whole video on it. It's a lot of farming. I just got my second Vile of the Sands recipe. Woo! Uh, after 14 hours of Manted farming. It was exciting. And so then we've got the Sky Golem. And I, I don't know if I'm going to be focusing on the BFA, uh, the BFA crafted mounts yet. But Sky Golem, Mechanohog, the World Spinner... Uh, those are some of the Sky Golem is all engineers, but some of them are uh, goblin only engineering. Some of them are gnomish engineering. I would like to have one of each. It's not actually too hard to swap between goblin and gnomish. Five of the goblin mounts, and then you swap over and you make five of the gnomish mounts, and then you're good for a little while. But I don't want to go through that hassle, so I'd like one of each. And then the flying carpet and the flying machine, while those are engineer only, they do still sell. Uh, so, I, you know, just that's free gold. Keep them stocked. Keep them up on the auction house. Okay, and I wasn't actually going to show you all this because I'm not done with it yet. I like to be done with my data. But, oh, oh, wait, we got to... Oh! <laughs> Okay, so uh, here is my pet tracking sheet. Um, I've got this is the, I've got my kill tracking and my inventory tracking. Here is my inventory of all the pets that I mentioned before. So we've there's there's some interest. It's been more farming than I expected because I thought you know I'll just get one Azure well playing, one bronze well. You know I'll get one of everything and then I'll be good. But people also buy the items. So shouldn't I also farm up the Azure Whelpling item? And then shouldn't I also farm... So so it's actually... I'd like to eventually have five of everything so I just like don't have to farm. And then this column tells me what of everything I need to actually go out and get. Uh, the Currently, I'm missing all of the mounts. These mounts suck. To farm, even even it like, I have one uh, tamed blood feaster, and uh, I think I have a dune scavenger. Oh, I have two dune scavengers. Sweet. Okay, so uh, eventually though, I'd like to have 
uh, this be just five. Uh, but that's so that's so much farming. It's actually good to see that like I'm I'm good on bronze whelplings and crimson. Filthlings are absurd. I went out with five tunes and did 15 minutes at uh, the filthling farm spot, and I got thir wait, 30 minutes at the filthling farming spot, and I got 50 co total filthlings. It's been absolutely crazy. They're so easy to get. I actually wouldn't be upset if the filthling farm got nerfed. Um, Blizzard, please. Lower the drop rate on the filthling farm. Get those get those things expensive. Also, I have fifty of them, so that would make me more gold. So that's that's really all there is with this. Uh, I've got these are the tunes that I have, and then I've got uh, you know it's just a subtraction column of and I've color coded it. There's some really cool formatting things you can do. Uh, out of the box with Google Sheets. And then here, this is a much uglier sheet. Don't don't worry, don't worry. I, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. I haven't formatted this one, but this is where I'm testing the drop rates for each individual farm because uh, one of the problems with using Wowhead is their uh, nerfs can happen, uh, their data can get outdated. Uh, but also, if you're farming, like, What's the drop rate of the Dune Scavenger from this thing? Well, you know, if you're just killing the Sky Callers, uh, but there's also Faithless Citizens in there that you're killing, and it doesn't drop. Like, if the mount doesn't drop from Faithless Citizens, but it does drop from the Faithless Sorcerers, then uh, your drop rates are going to be skewed, and you're going to think you only need to kill 3,000 of them, when in actuality you're going to need to kill... 20,000 uh so so i guess i could just go through so here's the name here's the location of the farm here's the actual enemy that i'm killing uh here's the price of the item the price of it caged uh so i can like play around with those numbers if i feel like it rare this is an important thing that you should start paying attention to on your pet farms uh if it's rare, then you can just kill for 30 minutes straight before you loot, and the loot, the, the pet will still be there on the body. Uh, if it's not rare, I did a whole video on this, but you may have missed it. Uh, and uh, so that really makes it easier when you're multiboxing, where you can just, you can just uh, kill for 30 minutes straight. Um, for kills... This is how many recorded kills I have of each individual thing. This is the per, you know, how many, how many I actually got to drop. Uh, kills per minute per toon. So generally, you're looking at about 120 kills per minute if everything's going perfectly. With the Dune Scavenger, I'm at 37 kills per minute. That's like, once I get a little bit more gear, I'll probably be able to bump that up to 40 or 50. Um, but I've got 150,000 kills and I've gotten four mounts. So that's right now, you know, it's not statistically significant yet, but I'm looking at a one in 37,000 drop rate for the mount. Rarity says one in 3,000. Wowhead says one in 3,000. Wowhead is a liar. Um, so these columns tell me with a five-man team, how many should I get? I should probably update this to an eight-man team now that I'm doing eight-man farms. Uh, and then the gold per hour expected from the eight-man team. And uh, just off the bat, the best... The two best farms are these right here. We've got the Bronze Whelpling and the Dark Whelpling. Those, you get so, like, 25,000 kills, I got 27 pets. 25,000 kills, I got 28 pets. And those pets are selling for 20 to 30,000, or let's say, let's say 10 to 50,000 gold each, depending on the realm. With that, it's so good. Whereas most of these other farms, Azure Whelplings, you're looking at 90 to 100,000 gold. 
and then I this these columns are just comparing that to the Wowhead data. Uh, Wowhead says that uh, bronze whelpling should be getting me a lot more gold than it is, and it says that uh, the wretched specter should be getting us a lot more gold than it actually is. So anyway. So that's those numbers. Uh, I'll be filling out this sheet and maybe we'll return to it in a later video once I have uh, more drops of some of the core pets. Okay, and here it is. Here is a whole bunch of work. I'll be, I'll be posting this spreadsheet up on Twitter. Follow me over there. Uh, I'll be I'll be posting it up regularly so y'all can follow the progress here. Uh, but this is so much work. Here here's my plan. I'm on four different servers: uh, Zoljin, Wormrest Accord, Moon Guard, and I was planning on going on Storm Rage, but I accidentally used a boost on a character that I made on Ashara, so I'm playing on Ashara now. Uh, so the first team that I'm going to be getting and the team that I currently have built and almost finished are my eight gatherers. They're, they're all druids. Druids are the best gatherers uh, for mining and herbalism. I need to get them to 120. I need to get them rank three of all the BFA ore, I need to get them rank three of all the BFA herbs, and then I need to get them uh, all of the old world stuff. So uh, Burning Crusade, Mining and Herbalism, Wrath, Kata, uh, Mop, and Legion, but I don't want to worry about WAD because you can't multi-tap nodes in Warlords of Draenor, which is weird, right? Like why is that the only ore that you can't multi-tap? But it's worth mentioning, since some of y'all are crazy sons of guns, you can only have 10 people tap uh, one node before it permanently and automatically despawns. Um, so uh, with eight, I'm not hogging, like I'm, I'm getting to the node first, but there are still two more people who can come along and mine that, that or, or, you know, get that anchor weed node. So I kind of messed up here, actually, because I snowballed things. I This is the account. The WoW 1 is the account I've always had. Because I made two accounts and leveled them up to 120 and then got mining and herbalism and all the old world stuff on that, and then I made enough gold to buy a second, or, you know, a fourth, then a fifth, then a sixth, and then a seventh account. Um, because I did it as a process... Everything's kind of staggered, so I'm having to repeat a whole bunch of uh, the 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 questing and you know going back and getting anchor weed rank three uh, kind of sucks, but I'm doing it and I'm almost done. I've got uh, two tunes that aren't at 120 yet. Phase two of the plan, this is the farmable mount section. Uh, phase two is the current content, two by four farms. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just having a blast with multiboxing and, and especially the naming and the little formations and the silly things you can do. So these guys, my gatherers, are Herb Orvor, which was named on stream. Thank you for that wonderful name, the, the ridiculous pun. And then I've got I'm with, I'm with him, I'm with her, I'm with them, uh, I'm here too, uh, I'm late, sorry, I've got I'm busy, and I'm missing the name of one of the accounts. And then for my, <laughs> for my uh, two by four farmers, uh, their names are uh, Snow White, Bashful, Dopey, Grumpy, Sleepy, Sneezy, Happy, and Doc. And uh, she, Snow White is a beautiful blood elf, and all of the other guys will be permanently in some toy that turns them into gnomes or, or dwarves or something. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, gotta, I, I haven't fully planned that out yet, but I'm having a lot of fun with this. I need to get them to 110. I need to get them Tools of the Trade... Uh, tailoring, I need to get this one 
goblin engineering, this one gnomish engineering. Uh, so you'll see that each of these have one goblin, one gnomish, uh, and then uh, Overwatch. Why are we... It's not Overwatch. I don't know. I don't remember what OW stands for. But uh, one thing that I want, do want to talk about is you can see that all of my gatherers are druids. But with the uh, farming team, the 2 by 4 farmers, I've got two monks in here. Uh, so there's... If you're farming specifically for these mounts, uh, currently the best way to go about that is to have one monk two mages and five boomkins uh if you're playing with war mode on then you want them to be frost mages if you're playing with war mode off then you want them to be fire mages they add a ton of damage and the uh the boomkins pull everything in but I also want to be, these are also going to be Taylor Engineers, engineering for the Luterang, um, and we're double dipping the Luterang and the engineering crafted mounts. Um, so with, with this, it's, it, I don't, as we keep getting better and better gear, uh, will be closer and closer to one-shotting the BFA enemies. And I don't ever want that to be an issue. Uh, so I, I, I like the idea of just having two monks because the monk ox statue, uh, when it pulls things in, its AoE taunt will also, it'll also tag things. You know, two by four farming only works if one person from each party tags, uh, the enemy, then all eight characters can loot that enemy. So that's kind of the core of it. And there are also some farms where it's like, I could have four people over here and then four people over here. And I'd have a monk statue at each. So uh, it's not the fastest way to farm for some of the farms, but it's a little bit more versatile and it's fine. You know, it's it's eight people. We're coming up on I level 500 soon, so I'll be a-okay. Now, the next group, you'll see here each server, rather than having two, uh, two people the same like we had on the gathers, I have one demon hunter uh, the good thing about Demon Hunters, you don't have to level them. Uh, so you, you just get them. I only really care about the Vial of the Sands recipe and the Panther recipes. And those are both, like, you just, you have high, your character's high enough just by default. So I don't have to worry about leveling these. Um, so the steps to level these guys up, I need to get uh, 525 Archaeology. Then I need to farm for a whole bunch of hours uh, at the Manted Dig sites in order to get the Vial of the Sands recipe. And then I need to get Transmute Master so I can get procs on my Pyrite uh, 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 Transmutes. And we'll also be using that to make a little bit more gold in other ways. And then I'm also going to be making the Panthers. Now, the... Perium transmute or pyrite transmute uh, that transmute shares a cooldown with the living steel transmute for the panthers so I'm not going to be doing the the living steel transmute instead I'm going to be doing the one not the or I'm not going to be doing the daily cooldown for living steel I'll instead be doing just the Spirit of Harmony thing. But that Spirit of Harmony craft can proc as well. So uh, that'll be good. And that's what this guy is for. This guy is just crafting uh, extra Perium bars and then feeding that to my my Vial of the Sands crafter. And then, and then repeat that process a whole bunch of times. The bad thing about these guys so far 
is, I mean, obviously, Vile of the Sands is just a jerk. Like, I, I did the math at one point, and it was 27 hours in order to get the Vile of the Sands recipe. Like, once you're already at 525 archaeology. Um, I actually got the Ultramarine Battle Tank and the Crawling Claw before I got the Vile of the Sands recipe, which, yay! Yay! Right? Woo! You! Yeah! Um, but, uh... It's been a hassle. Each of these bubbles is a whole bunch of hours. Like, getting to 120 is a whole bunch of hours. Getting rank 3 on all the BFA herbs, that's like 5 or 10 hours uh, for, for each of these and a bunch of flying around. Getting to 120, since I'm not buying a boost, I'm leveling them from level 1 uh, or from level 20. Uh, getting tools of the trade... That's actually really quick. It's just a bunch of deep sea satin once you actually get out farming. Getting goblin engineering, that's that's actually super simple. Um, and then playing Overwatch. I don't know what OW means. Oh no. Repeating that process a whole bunch of times is is a lot of work. This this whole this whole process uh, farming up all these guys, uh, getting all the patterns. It's been so much work. Um, but honestly, I, it's totally worth it. I am just so, like, it's just something I can do to give back to you guys for absolutely changing my life. Like, thank you to every single person who has ever donated to the stream, who has ever donated on Patreon. Uh, y'all just, y'all, y'all let me, y'all let me play freaking video games for a living and, and teach people how to make their lives a little bit simpler. And I don't mind putting in the work. I don't mind going through all this as long as someone out there, uh, gets, gets some, like, if one of you has a wife and kids and a job and wow is your escape, then uh, being able to get your WoW token just a little bit faster uh, so you can just enjoy and relax in the game, like, that absolutely makes my day, and that's why I do this. And thank you for letting me do this. So um, before I get too sappy... I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, if you have any recommendations, anything, uh, like, uh, hopefully all of this stuff has been pretty, like, there's nothing groundbreaking here that I'm talking about. I'm gathering, and I'm doing mount farms, I'm selling pets, and I'm making the vial of the sands. Like, that's all pretty obvious stuff, but I'm doing it in mass, and there's lots of little uh, struggles and, and uh, hurdles along the way. If there's anything that I forgot or anything you think I should include in any of my tracking sheets, then leave those down below. Uh, come meet me at the BlizzCon Want to Buy Gold meetup. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm real excited. We might live stream that. Uh, and give away the first mount there. If I can stop being lazy and get my act together and farm a couple of more Vile of the Sands recipes, then I'll actually be able to make that million gold a month. Uh, so yeah, follow, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Good luck and happy gold making.